So today I'm going to be talking about another one of these very dogmatic, evangelistic, preaching, fruitarian people that is undernourishing themselves with just eating fruit exclusively. And they think that just because they learn from all these raw food teachers that are very dogmatic, that program of all the beliefs that they are designed to only eat a fruitarian diet with us humans, it's the best diet for us. They follow their advice and these people look unhealthy that they listen to and then they end up very skinny, weak and frail. And this person is known as James D'Angelo. You can see he tried actually adding me as a friend. I haven't accepted friend requests for years and years and years unless I meet people personally. A lot of people add me for YouTube. So that's where he would have added me from. As you can see, he is heavily into this fruit-based lifestyle that so many people think that's good for them when in fact it is not whatsoever. So what we're going to do is first respond to this video. And as you can see, he has got a little bit of muscle, but oh my God, again, a person that looks like they're so emaciated and wasting away, just like Raw Bliss. If you haven't seen the video where I talk about him, he's even skinnier than him. I'll put a link for up above. I did a critique on his what he eats in a day video. But yeah, this person believes that the diet is good for him. So let's listen to this video together and see what he has to say. Hey everyone, just making an update of how I look right now. I like to make these updates just to know how my body's changing. I'm fascinated by it. Um, and if you notice in his voice, he sounds like he's slurring and if he's drunk, it's probably from all the fermentation of all of that fruit that he's eating. Um, this is after almost a year of oh, only man. eating fruits, pretty much very low fat fruits and after a week-long fast as well but now it's several weeks after the fast whoa you see the bones on his spine and his ribs oh my god man what are you doing to yourself this is really really stupid it's probably over a month now i'm starting to gain back my strength i lost a lot of strength during the fast but why would someone that's already really thin then go and do a, a a long fast and then continue eating fruit. It makes no sense at all. You need loads of animal foods and an excessive amount of calories, which I would call a calorie surplus to actually build up the body. Stop fasting and start eating more. Starting to feel very good now in terms of my cardiovascular and uh, my muscular strength is coming back. But um, yeah, I just thought that's just an update. That's how my body looks extremely lean, extremely lean, but I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling bad at all. I'm feeling very good in terms of my energy and how much I can do. And that's what so many of these fruitarians say, but it's all based on your own experience. What you might think makes you actually believe. And this saying you're gonna hear from fruitarians time and time again, they say that I feel absolutely amazing but everything is all a relative i bet if you got on a carnivore based diet and you felt the effects of that you would feel so much more amazing than what you feel now and then you'd look back on your fruitarian diet and say oh i thought i was thriving but i wasn't just like i thought that i wasn't a vegan diet and i switched to a carnivore based diet and then i'm like wow man when i thought i was thriving the most on a vegan diet i actually wasn't whatsoever now how i'm functioning and feeling is at the highest level possible so yeah everything is relative and a lot of them are just very delusional. How much I want to do in my mood and everything. Some people think it's bad to be so lean. Yes, it is so bad to be lean. It's called sarcopenia, which is not good for anyone in any way, shape or form. Um, but I definitely am able to gain strength <sighs> and uh, endurance. So I'm excited to see how my body changes in the future. You don't look like you have strength for endurance at all. I think it's all in your head. And if you used to actually try and train alongside me, you'd not be able to keep up at all. Yeah, this is just for anyone who's interested to see what kind of happens to the body after long periods on only fruit and fasting, which fasting, I don't really like what it does to my body. I, I lose. <laughs> he doesn't like what he does to his body, but he's doing it. It's like, oh, come on, man. Seriously, what are you doing to yourself? Do you like to just self-sabotage? Is that is what is going on for you or what? There's a lot of strength. I get very skinny very fast. But who knows what's happening to the body in the long term? It is 
damaging your health in the long term and making you waste away. And you say you might feel good, but to be honest, if you continue doing this, you are just gonna disappear into the abyss. I just, I'm just excited to see the changes. <laughs> and yeah, I think, I think fasting is beneficial, but you will get weak, you will get, you will lose weight. I've done a lot of fasting, but I don't do it when I'm already very, very thin, except for when I was on a fruit-based diet and I had this thing in my mind where it's like, you just need to detox and cleanse all the time because all symptoms are due to toxicity and you just need to detox more, which is programming from teachers such as Dr. Robert Morrison. It's like so many fruitarians had that same mindset as well. But then you wake up one day and then you start to realize that it's all BS. And then I've done fasting without the fruitarian diet combined to make sure I eat a lot and don't fast longer than my body needs to so it wastes away. And I've actually been able to keep my muscle mass and a healthy optimal body fat percentage. But these people going to extreme, they don't need to fast and they're forcing their body to fast when it's not necessary. If you're, especially if you're new to it, maybe people who are have done it more don't have the same experience as I have. But yeah, on a fruit lifestyle, if you do it long term, low fat, especially if you're a male, I think it's inevitable that you will lose most of your body fat. Yes, because you're not eating enough calories, you're not getting enough protein to give you optimal nitrogen balance, which is key for growing your muscles and maintaining muscle mass. And you're not getting enough fat because you're eating super high carb fruits. And guess what? Fats give you essential fatty acids. They're called essential for a reason because your body doesn't produce them. And guess what they do? They optimize your hormone reduction, which your physique looks like your testosterone levels are very, very low. And overall, it looks like your whole hormone production is completely messed up due to being this ridiculous diet and then doing loads of fasting. Um, you definitely won't lose muscle unless you stop eating like I did. <laughs> you look at all these other videos, he's still skinny in every single video, even when he's not fasting. So this is just complete load of garbage that he's saying. Like I said, he's just very delusional. But I've definitely been able to gain muscle back and the most minimal amount of muscle that's hardly noticeable or yeah improve improve my strength and endurance on this on this way of living it's it's quite it's actually the best endurance i've ever had in many years but what is your baseline you probably already prior to where you're at now didn't have a very high level of endurance Unlike a lot of people out there that train for endurance, I bet your endurance is actually really not that good at all. But again, it's all relative. You may be better than you was before, but it doesn't mean you do have a good level of endurance now. I, I do m much hiking. I do a lot of hiking and working outside in nature, being outside, walking around, just being around nature in general. So, yeah, that's been my experience. It's beautiful. Beautiful sunny day today, so I'm gonna go out and get some more of this amazing sunlight and nature. So I'll see y'all later. So now we are gonna go on to the fruitarian diet. How much do you need? So he's giving people advice on how much fruit you need to be eating. So let's see, is he actually eating enough fruit? to actually give him optimal body fat percentage of fat. And as you can see here, he does have definitely some more fat here, but he doesn't look like he's gained much muscle at all after the fast, and he's kept eating consistently after this. He still looks very skinny, weak, and frail. How much food do I eat as someone that only eats fruit? And again, very slurred speech. Man, are you drinking alcohol? Is that alcohol being created all that fermentation from all that fruit you're eating in copious amounts? It changes, it changes. And I don't really know. It's not something I pay attention to so much. <laughs> like, I need to eat this amount. I really just go by my feeling. And your feeling is very wrong because look at what it's doing to your mental health and your physical health and your body as a whole. It's not good. In my stomach, really. A lot of times my stomach will tell me how much... I need to eat because my stomach will just be like, dude, I'm full. That's enough. That's enough. I don't want any more. Like, that's enough. And that's what happens when you do so much fasting and calorie restriction for so long, your eating capacity becomes way lower. So then what it results in, you normally feel fuller way, way sooner. So then what happens is you end up with an orthorexic, anorexic type of diet where you just massively under eat because you need to train your body to be able to eat 
more due to all of the fasting and the calorie restriction that you've done to the extreme. Two small pineapples and I made a juice with that. And when he says small pineapples, he means these very, very small ones. Two small pineapples, about that big or something. Three mangoes, one papaya, about that big. Seven small bananas, like that big. And that's what I ate today. <laughs> that's it, seriously, man. That is roughly around 800 calories or so. Maybe a thousand are pushed by doubt. It is. It's like, oh my God, that's the amount of calories like a six-year-old needs. And you're like meant to be a full grown man. Like, what are you doing to yourself? So I really listen to my body. I don't believe I know more than my body. I don't believe um, my body is just like this thing that I need to control. I, he's not very in tune with his body. He thinks he is, but oh my God, this person. <sighs> I need to listen to my body. I need to be, I need to listen to it. I need to be obedient to it. A lot of times people want to be in control over their body and it really causes them a lot of issues. And what can happen is with doing a lot of fasting, which I'm not anti-fasting at all, it's a very good thing, there's a lot of science behind it, but there's a lot of people do it in very unhealthy ways. But if you keep doing it so often with massive calorie restriction, you are just training your body to not really get hungry. I've done this before in the past and you pretty much never feel hunger. So then you're like, oh, I just hardly ever eat and I fast loads more. And you think you're in tune with your body, but you're actually not. As I found, once I got off this stupid vegan diet and started eating animal-based foods, now I'm in tune with my body and I eat the foods that actually nourish me and stop me from deteriorating and make me thrive and have the optimal body fat percentage and muscle mass as much as, as I possibly can get from eating this way. But I want, I want my body to control me because my body is, it's intelligent. Like it's, it knows, it knows everything. You want your body to control you? That makes no sense. It doesn't control you. It just does what it naturally does without you even thinking. And we, we ignore our bodies way, way too often. We ignore our bodies. And you're ignoring yours by doing these stupid things to make you turn into an in real life Jack skeleton. But if we really just tap into our bodies and our feeling, like what's actually going on in my body? I guess that's why meditation can be so beneficial because you're like, Okay, what's actually, what am I actually feeling? Let me actually really feel these sensations. Let's just like be still. And, oh, I have some pressure there. Oh, I have some pressure here. Oh, I have some uncomfortable, something uncomfortable going on in my chest. And then you're able to tell what's going on. And as you eat, you, you can really meditate on how you feel before and after and how you're feeling while you're eating. It's like an eating meditation. It's, it's really beneficial, especially if you're new to getting comfortable listening to your body. It's really beneficial just to like meditate while you're eating, like feel every sensation. Yeah, and I agree you should be present while you eat with no distraction because it helps enhance the digestion and assimilation of the food you're eating. But there's so many people that use meditation for spiritual bypassing. A lot of people do it to, to be avoidance in life. And there's a lot of people that do meditate but still have eating disorders such as this person. And the more you do this, the more that you can start to hear your body, hear your body talk to you. Because your body like talks to you. I think your body is talking to you, it's screaming out saying, please feed me, stop making me fast. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's not that weird. Your body tells you almost immediately if you are done eating, like, I'm done. I don't want any more. It's, it's almost like immediate, but a lot of times our brain's like, no, we got to finish. We got this whole bowl of food. We got to finish this food. What if we leave a little bit left? So no, what are we going to do? Or we'll be, we'll be like, I'm not eating now. I am fasting. I am fasting right now. I cannot eat, but your body's like, dude, I need some food. Give me, I'm fasting. Shut up. Shut up. Yeah, see, you're even experienced that with fasting. You're probably saying, give me food, and you haven't been listening to it, and you're just forcing it. You're controlling it and not listening to it. I'm fasting. Um, so, yeah, you don't really want to be doing that, that sort of thing. Seems you're doing it. You want to be taking these signals from your body and respecting them, and, and then you'll figure out how much food you need to eat.
don't 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 listen to people that say that you need x amount of calories a day whether it's an excessive amount or very little amounts you need a certain amount of calories every day to maintain a healthy amount of body weight which you're not doing at all don't listen to that because you need to listen to your body and everyone says that and that's one of the excuses a lot of people have for eating all sorts of weird different ways and and then a lot of these fruitarians like you have excuses that oh the reason why i'm so skinny is because i'm detoxifying so much and i'm so toxic and this is just how we're naturally meant to look and so on it's like come on man a lot of what he's saying it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever there's no science to back it up a lot of it's delusions and a lot of it's just like dogma that's been programmed within his mind I mean, but it's one of the main reasons why I continue to do what I do is just by listening to my body. I got into this because of listening to uh, my body. I got into this. Well, listening to your body has not done you any good whatsoever from what we can see here right now. Because that's the way that my body led me and it continues to lead me. And it's just nowadays, it's just leading me towards eating sweet fruits. Your body did not lead you from whatever diet you're eating before to a fruit-based diet it was your head that made those choices and learned the information and got itself programmed from all of these stupid raw food and fruitarian teachers out there they know nothing whatsoever on nutrition anytime that i go outside of that anytime i maybe eat like an, a fatty food or fatty fruits like avocados my body is just a lot of the a lot of times just saying no man i, I don't want that They're like no because you've avoided it for so long, your body is not used to it, and you've got a lot of programming in your mind where you think fats are bad, because this is what so many fruitarians think. And then it can affect them in a negative way and not make them feel good, and they say, well, it's because that is bad. It's like, well, if you have a certain mindset around something, it doesn't matter how pure and good it is for you, it will affect you in a negative way. And I used to be like this when I was on a fruitarian diet. I thought fats were the root of all evil with foods. And it doesn't satisfy me, it doesn't, it makes me feel less uh, calm and, and peaceful and, and still inside my body. So I just listen to that. If I, start, if I start getting these feelings like, dude, I need some fatty shit, I need some fatty foods, then I'm going to go with that. But I'm just going with my body. And it's led me to this place of eating fruit. <laughs> Which is not a good place at all. You need to wake up before you do yourself any further damage. Of course, I still have um, spiritual, mental, and moral connection to the land and the animals, and I'm not. I'm never going to. I never want to, even. My body, first of all, doesn't crave that. But additionally, I don't want to go against my spiritual feelings as well. I do have bodily feelings and spiritual feelings. But your body really should lead you in the right direction. And when I started to massively deteriorate on a fruitarian diet and then a vegan diet, I was not very in tune with my body. And I thought that a plant-based diet was the best for me. And I wasn't drawn to the animal foods pretty much whatsoever. But I learned a lot of information on it based on science. Knew that I was lacking certain things on the diet. So I started incorporating the right animal foods, the highest quality ones possible. And guess what? My issues started to go away. And then my body started desiring. But because I hadn't had it for years and years and years, of course my body's not going to crave it. Because I'd, I managed to eliminate the desire for those foods out of my body for so long. So it's not going to keep wanting me to go and eat it. If your body is leading you in a wrong direction, it's probably not your true signals of your body. It's probably what you, the addictive, the addictions, the addictions. And yeah, and being an extreme person as well, which what you'll find is with pretty much all these fruitarian people that have extreme tendencies. So what he's saying, he actually needs to listen to himself and take his own advice. And once again, there's a distinction between true bodily desires and bodily addictions you have to know that difference that's the one thing i'll see you guys later have an awesome day peace and yeah this is what you see with these people time and time again they are just so blinded by all of the things that they believe to be good for people and then they're being very dangerous by sharing this on social media and a lot of people that haven't got the best internal navigation system and they just believe what anyone says, follow along with what they share with their dietary recommendations and then it gets them to waste away as well. It's not good at all. So yeah, if you want to check out this channel and this person, 
there'll be a link down below for his channel very interesting person to say the least has a lot of crazy ideas with diet and life but yeah it's the end of the video if you have any questions leave them down below don't forget to like share and subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis so as always stay happy and enjoy the rest of your day peace